my dear friend of almost 30 years, Dr. Dhirin Prabhakar, Dr. Rajoshi from R.G. Stone, Dr. Sara, my team and friends, Amit Marka Barabashi. It's nice to be back here in Calcutta. Calcutta is the coming moment. Dr. Rajeshri mentioned about robots. Someone asked me what is the role of robots in andrology. So I told him that that has not been developed as yet. But what I would like to see is that the robot does all the hard work and the man lying next door gets all the pleasure. That be the ultimate. You know, the other day, a uh, 75 year old man walked into my clinic and said, Sir, I want my sex lowered. My sex is too high. I said, I thought in my mind, you bugger. People come to me with a low sex drive and they want it raised. And here you are wanting to get it lowered. So, just as I was thinking, whether to castrate him or to give him some medicines, he says, Doctor, you don't understand. My sex is too high. It's all up here. I want a bit lower down there. <laughs> now, people have their own way of describing the symptoms. And this is especially true for sexual health. In, up to very recently, we used to have men coming to the clinic, urologist clinic, and they waste two, three time, times time and money before they come to the point that they've got sexual problem. But nowadays, the women bring them in. And we take care of This is very common nowadays. What are the problems with the sexual life? It's all, all increasing. But I thought we'd take the three most common points in this uh, seminar. Premature ejaculation, erectile dysfunction, and female sexual dysfunction. And then after that, we'll have a panel discussion where we will listen and you all will talk. That's one of the best part of the program. So let, let, I've got a very fine and experienced team, young but experienced, in Dr. Monica Agrawal. And hold her to your breath. She's a cosmetic gynecologist. Just idea for female sexual dysfunction. She will talk about female sexual dysfunction. And Dr. Sanjay Gad is another young but experienced andrologist who works in Manipal Hospital in Ghazewal. He will talk about premature ejaculation. But you can come and start. I talk about it. This is what premature ejaculation is. So, uh, so we are discussing about uh, erectile dysfunction. Uh, what about erection or death? Now I have been called upon to discuss about premature ejaculation. So it's just like uh, gas arriving too early. Uh, can I have this? So as I mentioned, it's just like uh, a gas arriving too early. We are not prepared. So. It doesn't matter for the guests, but for the all the members of the uh, home, they all are uh, in a fix what to do. So similarly, <coughs> so when it happens again and again, then really it becomes a problem. Uh, female can obviously uh, take it for a, a day or two, for one time or two time, but whenever it is again and again, then definitely uh, both needs to be uh, counselled, both need to be treated, and. As uh, this problem is mainly in female, uh, in males, because this is the thing which has its medical problem, its social problem, psychological problem. Definitely, it needs to be addressed. Though it is hidden uh, behind the curtain, but now gradually, as society is becoming aware of it, more and more people, people as I sir mentioned, females are coming to us with the problem that their partner is having premature uh, ejaculation. Rather, I would call it as rapid ejaculation or uh, coming to that uh, because it is not uh, premature, it comes too early. It's a rapid ejaculation. So, 
what do we know about history? This problem dates back to long ancient times, especially in Egypt also. There, they used to, uh, the sex as in the mind, they used to worship it. And they used to worship the fellas just because they should get all the pleasure. And pleasure is only achieved when orgasm is achieved simultaneously. Seeing the medical literature, we often find references of premature ejaculation date, dating back to 1887. But first acceptable definition was given by Masters and Johnson. Whenever a definition of a subject or a disease uh, or entity is given, a uh, lot of things have uh, been put behind it. There is a study based on thousands or maybe sometimes lakhs of uh, patients. Then they come to a conclusion and give us the definition. But in this premature ejaculation, we will find different societies having different definitions. So they all aim at the same thing, that ejaculation coming too early. But they will attach different aspects to it. They will attach psychological aspect to it. They will attach latency time to it. The definition given by Master and Johnson was the inability of a man to delay ejaculation long enough for his partner to reach orgasm on nearly 50% of intercourse attempts. Then came the American Neurological Association, which said ejaculation occurring sooner than desired, causing distress to one or both partners. Here they mentioned distress to one or both partners, so they are also taking about consideration of the psychological aspect of it. EUA mentioned inability to control ejaculation for sufficient length of time after vaginal penetration. In this they didn't mention about the social, psychological aspect or about the partner. Similarly, WHO also has a long definition in which the thing was same, they mentioned the time, if the time limit is required before or within 15 seconds of ejaculation of uh, beginning of intercourse, which we later on say that it's the primary thing or quiet thing. When we talk about the timings, then definition comes whether it's the primary uh, PME or a quiet PME. I'll be talking about it later. American Psychiatric Association, they said that persistent or recurrent ejaculation with minimal stimulation before, on or shortly after penetration and most importantly before the person wishes it which causes bar distress or interpersonal difficulty they call it this as PME now the main functional definition which was given by International Society for Sexual Medicine they have taken in aspect all the three parameters or all the three important points what do they say? a male sexual dysfunction characterized by ejaculation which always or nearly always occurs prior to or within about one minute of vaginal penetration when they talk about within one minute it is a lifelong PE which is a primary PE whereas uh, if it is uh, there is a bothersome reduction in latency time often to about three minutes or less there is acquired PE acquired PE comes maybe later in the life simultaneously if there is inability to delay ejaculation the person if he wishes to but still he cannot delay ejaculation in nearly all or nearly all vaginal penetration third and the most important aspect of this definition is that it has negative personal consequences such as distress bother frustration or avoidance of sexual intimacy here come, here role comes from the partner and this is the most important role because nowadays many and many legal issues are seen when which a, a female partner asks for divorce because of this aspect only, because she is sexually frustrated and because a man uh, comes out too early, she is not satisfied. So, already discussed in earlier slides, uh, what is ejaculation? It consists of two parts. One is emission, the other is actual or true ejaculation. Emission is just deposition of seminal fluid in the posterior urethra, whereas true ejaculation is expulsion of this fluid from the posterior urethra through the penal meters. As we are all aware that uh, whatever the pathology or whatever the disease that affects our body, there has to be some chemical disturbance in the body. Here in case of uh, premature ejaculation, the main cul uh, culprit is serotonin, 5 ST, or I would say the deficiency of serotonin. This is the major neurotransmitter which is involved in the process of ejaculation and it inhibits ejaculatory reflex. So whenever there is a low level of 5 ST, or ST receptor hyposensitivity is there, then it can lead to PE. So when we give the drug, the, our main aim is to increase the either the sensitivity of receptors or the quantity of serotonin. So this happy hormone, this makes us uh, delay the ejaculation. In PE, the black the plateau phase this is shorted. Now there is no 
symptoms that are visible or clinical symptoms that a person can, can tell us. It's a self-reported problem. A person has to come to our clinic on his own wish. There has to be a stimulus either by himself or his partner. And uh, when we, when a person reports to us, we have to measure measurement of intravaginal ejaculation latency time. This is an attempt to define PE in terms of time taken to ejaculate. It is a time interval between vaginal penetration and intravaginal ejaculation. What we have to consider when a person comes to us reporting PE, we have to consider this ejaculatory latency, that is the time taken to ejaculate, the ability to control ejaculation, that is a wish to delay ejaculation. Simultaneously, psychological or frustration, psychological distress, impact on quality of life, partner's attitude, intersexual relationship. So all these factors should be considered when a person visits our OPD, our clinic, before subjecting him to some treatment. Main features of PME are that we all know that as mentioned by Dr. Shah in the earlier slides, that nearly up to 30% of men at any time of their life will suffer from PME. And there are two basic PME, <coughs> primary or secondary. Primary, which I told is lifelong PME, in which it is present from the day one, when a person performs uh, intercourse or secondary when it comes at any point later in the life. Normally, when we see the average amount of time a man is suffering from premature ejaculation, his ejaculation last is around 1.8 minute. Now, in all the definitions, in all the things, we are only talking about actual intercourse. But PE also should be considered in other two things. What are those? One is a person either is uh, masturbating or oral intercourse, oral sex. Then also this early ejaculation or rapid ejaculation should be considered. Because nowadays in our society, these two are also the things which have sexual desire, sexual pleasure. So they should also be considered when taking the history. So already mentioned there are four type of classification, lifelong, acquired, natural variable and premature like ejaculatory dysfunction. In natural variable, I just wanted to point out, it means sometimes a person has PE, otherwise he is normal. And in the last premature right ejaculatory dysfunction, this is entirely a psychological problem. It is just like this. Ki uski kabhi meri kabhi se we all are subjected to porn. We all, uh, all the person in the society may at any point of time uh, see porn. So when we this consider or see that uska ejaculation delay itna jada hota hai, jabki they are sub having no problem. Their ejaculatory time or latency time is absolutely normal. Still, it is in their mind, they are, they, are subjecting, uh, they are suffering from PE. So this is called as premature like ejaculatory dysfunction. And major thing in this is, it is a psychological disorder. No therapy will work on this. They have to be counseled and psychotherapy has to be given. In particularly in this sort of, uh, sort of disease of patients. I will skip these slides because uh, already we have talked about lifelong PME, acquired PE, natural variable and premature like ejaculatory dysfunction. Now, main causes of uh, PE, obviously, the most important thing is psychological. This is the disease in which, apart from serotonin, which I said that it is a chemical parameter, para chemical transmitter, which affects our ejaculation, but most of the patient, nearly 70 to 80% patients, they have some or the other psychological element in it. Either it is a simple fear, which often stems from previous experience of PE, or stress, anxiety, or relationship problem. So we have to address these two things whenever we are treating these patients. Obviously, biological things are there, inflammation of prostate, prostatitis, abnormal levels of brain chemicals which are neurotransmitters, abnormal reflex activity, inherited traits, abnormal hormone levels that is already mentioned in the first uh, lecture, that is low testosterone levels, side effects of certain drugs, mainly those drugs like antihypertensive other drugs, they cause uh, ED, but sometimes they can also cause PE. Rarely from nervous system damage resulting from surgery or trauma. So now coming to the things, how to approach these patients when they approach in a property. We have to take a proper history with the duration of symptoms which will qualify it as a primary or acquired. It, uh, is it associated with ED which is seen sometimes in 30 to 40 percent of patients whether it is situation or global. Its uh, situation means in certain situation a person can have PE otherwise he is normal impact on life or interpersonal relationship very important point perceived control of ejaculation whether a person can delay it or not 
and then medical history. Is he taking certain drugs or is he suffering from any other disease? Then psychological or psychiatric problem. The way the most important, the most important thing. There are certain screening questionnaires are there in which there is a detailed history that how many times a person has PE or certain other things. So I won't go into the details of this. Now coming to the clinical examination. As in the history, we have seen that there can be a neurological element, there can be some biological disease. So we have to go to uh, the neurological examination, whereas physical examination which includes abdominal and genital examination and rectal examination just to see whether there is some tenderness in the prostate or not, person is suffering from any infection of the prostate or not. So coming to the treatment part, as this ailment has a psychological element or many more things, so we have an entire basket of non-pharmaceutical treatment for this and this should apply, along with the after taking the proper history when do, we have to prescribe the drug but before that we have to do or uh, treat him along uh, with non pharmaceutical agents we have to have a proper psychosexual counseling or psychotherapy for these patients when we see that uh, there is a element of uh, his psych or there is a social distress in the family interpersonal relationship is disturbed so then there is an important role in psychosexual counseling or psychotherapy that's why these patients are often treated as a teamwork taking in consideration with a psychiatrist or a psychologist. He should be treated or told about meditation exercises, relaxation or hypnotherapy. The other measures that should be told about uh, how to control PE uh, is pre coital masturbation. Here we have to just on a light note like premature ejaculation should be turned uh, to turn into mature ejaculation. Jitni bar karenge, utni der parti jayegi. So, pre coital masturbation. There are certain other techniques which I tell stop start technique or squeeze technique. Though they are not 100% effective, but definitely in few cases they can help. Use of multiple condoms. This is just to decrease the sensitivity part of it. Pelvic floor exercise, fecal exercise, you all know about it. They also have a role in controlling our muscles. Extended core play, cognitive distraction just to distract the mind so that person does not ejaculate and the process starts again. Alternative sex position in which very important is women on top. In this position a person can delay ejaculation for a little bit longer period. Interval sex, increasing frequency of sex and maybe acupuncture. When it comes to pharmacological treatment there are many drugs but especially SSRI and uh, Depoxidin then the topical anesthetic cream lidocaine, prudocaine Trevedol nowadays creating interest uh, about the role of trevedol, I'll tell about it. Tricyclic antidepressant, SSRIs, paroxetine, floxetine, sertraline and obviously PD5 inhibitors also have a role in it. New treatment or some sort of surgical intervention can also be helpful in uh, treating this circumcision. Circumcision is especially helpful uh, when ejaculation or uh, this uh, intercourse is uh, associated with sometimes painful intercourse is there or because of this prepuce, the glass remains too sensitive then after circumcision it has been seen in certain population that a person can benefit and he can, uh, he can get the ability to delay the ejaculation. Dorsal client, penile and cryoabrasion, neuromodulation, hyaluronic acid gla uh, gel, glass augmentation or bottle toxic injection. They are just to decrease the sensitivity of the glass or decrease the penile nerve sensation. Future therapeutic options which are in the research are dopamine receptor antagonist, GABA B partial antagonist, serotonin 1 receptor antagonist, oxytocin receptor antagonist, neurokinin 1 receptor antagonist, purinergic 2 receptor antagonist. These are just for tabulation, uh, but most commonly the drug used is SSRI and other local anesthetic agents which are in common practice. So, as I mentioned earlier, most important thing is. Psychotherapy or our mental control patients should be told about it that he should treat sex as a novelty, he should elevate the fear, and there should be no performance anxiety. The main 3C of this psychotherapy or psychological treatment is the patient should be tried that he should gain his confidence, he should remain calm, especially during the act, and he should talk, his mind should not be confused, it should be clear minded person. Then, as I mentioned, stop squeeze technique in which the just before ejaculation a pressure is applied on the undersurface of the penis to 
stop the equation process. This therapy or this technique can be helpful in around 30 percent of cases. Start stop technique is again initially a person estimates is himself to the point of climax, then distracts. Stop stimulation until the urge to climax is abolished. Then again start stimulation. With this technique for start stop technique, some person might get benefit out of it. Distraction during intercourse, just before ejaculation, distract yourself. Think about something other than sex, or you can count your strokes but backwards, like 199, 98. These are all techniques which just to train the mind. Kegel's exercise, as I mentioned, here are the few creams which can be applied to glass, so it desensitizes it. When after application, we have to wait for around uh, five to ten minutes. Thereafter, a person can perform, uh, uh, there are, and he will definitely have a little bit of delay in ejaculation. Antidepressants, uh, holding the main source of uh, treatment, especially our uh, SSRIs, which are helpful to uh, to retain the uh, happy hormone. It remains there, and this can delay the ejaculation. This SSRI. Uh, they work on the receptors. They block the uptake of serotonin and thereby serotonin is present to act for a longer period. Tremadol, as I told that nowadays we are using Tremadol, it has got a weak property, it acts on new opioid receptors, but the ultimate thing, what does it do? It also delays or it also potentiates the effect of serotonin because serotonin is available to act at that receptors for a longer time. So that's why Tremadol is uh, sometimes used when other drug fail. These are certain home remedies which can help, which can be helpful in delaying the ejaculation, like uh, onions, lady finger, and some other things are there. This is just like for uh, sexual things. These are all the things which are used as aphrodisiac in our uh, sexual activities: watermelon, strawberries, avocado, uh, and nuts, dark chocolates. So ultimately, I would like to emphasize that whatever time it takes to ejaculate, the thing should be sweet. Both 30 seconds and 10 minutes can be a great sex. Longer is always, not always better. 30 seconds of intense excitement and intimacy is better than 10 minutes of routine and boredom. So whenever we consider sex or whenever we con uh, con uh, consider ejaculation, it is more important that the both persons are satisfied whether it is after 10 seconds or after 10 minutes. And when a person thinks that he is suffering from PE or whenever there is a uh, social angle to it, psychological distress is, he should reach out, he should shy away from it. Thank you.